Okay, so we have a very interesting topic, uh, age of entrepreneurship, getting younger, future-proofing the X factor. So um, let me uh, just say, you know, begin uh, setting up the context, you know. Uh, Eric Yuan, founder of uh, Zoom, 41 years old. Um, what do you call Bob Parsons, GoDaddy, 47 years old. Okay. Uh, you have uh, Reed Hastings uh, started Netflix, he was 37. So age and entrepreneurship has been seen in a certain way uh, over the last few years and we think that the youngsters out of college are the ones who are doing it. While at the other end of the spectrum, we I just quoted a few names, you know, they are also disrupting it. First of all, age and entrepreneurship, let me start with you Bharat. Uh, how do you see it? I mean, do we have a lot of myths around it? Uh, I don't think so that uh, we have any myth uh, around the age of entrepreneurship. Uh, even if I look at the young entrepreneurs today, I'm not even focusing on uh, the success stories. Even if I talk about failure stories, then also I think like like a US, uh, like in US, uh, an army training is compulsory for everybody. In India, I think everybody should go through a phase of entrepreneurship because it actually helps them in the in the in the employment also and it it makes them self-driven and uh, the problem solving uh, factor that an entrepreneur has it has to be there in everybody so i think uh, age has nothing to do with uh, entrepreneurship it can be at age of 60 it can be age, at age of 16 also uh, like we have a very good example in india only like um, uh, ritesh agarwal who is the founder of oyo he started at uh, 17 or 18 and today, and today also, I think he's the youngest billionaire, self-made billionaire in India. So, so he's a, yeah. Okay. Parul, how do you see this conversation and what is your understanding of the age and entrepreneurship context? I think uh, entrepreneurship is definitely a mindset. And you need to be in a certain mind space when you're able to take risks. And naturally, what happens is when you have lesser responsibilities, etc., when you're younger you are able to take more risks than you are in later part of your life. So naturally, we see a lot more experimentation happening in early ages. And naturally, if number of people going in are higher, the probability of them getting success will be actually also in sheer number of people, right? However, I think beyond a certain age, what you have is the ability to take strong calculated risks, which comes with a, level, uh, with a little bit of weathering, with a little bit of experience. And uh, which is why we see great success stories across, right? So I would say any person who has the mindset of being able to experiment, take risks and take calculated risks with experience will eventually win. It really doesn't matter whether they're young or old. So mindset is the key word here. Vani, your take on this? Well, I think that um, right now the way internet is, communities are, social media is, um, the younger generation has a lot of accessibility, much more at this current time and age. And at this point, I think uh, they're using that and actually executing ideas that they have. Mm -hmm. So perhaps they are younger entrepreneurs now. However, I'm not saying that that can be a success story or not. And there's always failures and success in everything that we do when we uh, use that. But, uh, even with the people that you uh, can you guys hear? Uh, is the mic working? Uh, you can use the other mic actually. Yeah. Even if you take into consideration the names that you just said, most of them are like in the upper 30s limit or 40s. And I think having a good idea and being passionate about it is great. And that is an entrepreneur's main core. But having some experience to execute that in the correct manner is also essential. So I think that even though the age varies right now and is reducing having the right team even if you're a young entrepreneur to make sure it's executed properly is very essential wonderful yeah actually i'll go with the side of i think people who are of i think about 30 because my age is 38 so what i believe ki uh, age i think age is just a number but still if someone of i think crosses 30 he has a little bit of maturity in him because he has seen most part of life He's settled, he has family. So the kind of decision the person takes, I think is, I think more mature and 
and the result also i think comes good because he now has seen the failures he has he has taken many decisions in life he has seen many failures in that so when he takes decisions after, after when a person cross 30 the decisions are quite i think fairly well placed so i believe yes age after 30 if i say it helps i think for any person any business uh, owner in taking right decisions yeah thank you so the mindset uh, uh, is the key keyword here i mean if you have the mindset you can start at any age so let me come to the you know after establishing businesses uh, you know a st successful startup of course the next uh, big question is to sustain that success you know which means future proofing you know taking that risk risk uh, assessment and you know ensuring that your business grows and stays on course uh, bharat uh, you know, we, we see how um, new businesses are coming and there is uh, competition, growing competition in the same category as well. How do you future-proof yourself as an entrepreneur? What all do you do, you know, to stay uh, relevant, to grow your business despite a lot of me-toos around you? Uh, so, uh, my dad uh, has taught me like two things. Uh, one of them is go straight and turn right. Heaven to go straight and, and, and turn right and... The second one is uh, to be stable, you have to run. So firstly, you have to focus on the financial sustainability because that will be, uh, be a very big factor to play in future proofing. And secondly, if you'll, if you, uh, and secondly, you'll have to adapt the changing environment in a way that you don't become obsolete or you, you or your product doesn't become obsolete. So future proofing comes, future proofing like it is it consists of two words but it has a lot of things in it it has financial sustainability it has uh, it has adaptability as 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 for example ai is there so i'm not i'm not sure what what ai uh, will uh, play as a role in fragrances that we are into but anything can come up tomorrow which has ai in it and uh, so we need to think so I, I saw a I saw a podcast uh, of Mr. Ritesh Malik. Uh, he says that you you need to think twenty years uh, ahead. Only then you will be able to sustain and future uh, and be a future proof uh, company basically. So it's it's like long term planning, your finance financial planning, and go straight and turn right. Parul, what is your mantra of uh, future proofing uh, businesses? You know. Um, in a I think context, um, yeah. it's, a, it's an interesting and a very relevant question for all sectors, all companies. I think that the, uh, the only way to survive the future is to constantly innovate. There are companies like Nokia which were market leaders and then eventually died and vanished because they didn't innovate at the speed that they were supposed to. So you, at any point in time, we can't get complacent. We can't say that the product that we have is servicing the consumer needs today and is the best in the market, that's not enough. The second thing is, the days of one product company are over. You know, just having one single product which reaches the market and surprises the consumer. Um, I don't think companies can be built just the way they were built 50 years back. They can't be built like that today. You need to be ha having a certain category refrain. You need to be serving a certain consumer need very clearly. And those consumer needs, whether we like it or not, they constantly change. So you have to make sure that you're fulfilling that consumer need in the consumer, you know, in, in the and, and making sure your offerings are absolutely servicing that in a very, very innovative manner. That's how you will really future proof yourself. And Vani, also, like when we say we need to look uh, at the consumer closely, uh, I mean, what, how does it happen exactly, you know, in your case? Do you track them so on social media? Do you have the data points? How does that part come into, you know, play? Uh, of course, and, the, and how do you future-proof your business? Well, I think that holding the customer at the core of your business will definitely help you future-proof anything you do. So even for us, we started off as, like she was saying, the time of one product companies are over. But we started with a one product idea, uh, which was to make an organizer for bags so that women can actually have everything organized and it fits perfectly, it protects your bag, all that stuff. But that snowballed later into several other products that aligned with our vision of providing things to protect functionality and take care of things that matter to you. So being agile and being ahead of the game 
listening to your customer. I think um, getting criticism is a great thing. So when a customer tells you, you know what, I didn't like this about your product or I didn't like that about your product, take with a pinch of salt, improve what you have and do that with everything. So, and also in order to future proof yourself, you have to stay ahead of the game. So in today's time and age, there's so much innovation. The market is changing. Your general uh, consumer mindsets are changing. Sustainability is coming in. Stay ahead of the game. Read, be knowledgeable and adapt and be agile to every aspect of it to make sure that your business grows accordingly. Wonderful. So also take criticism and respond to it by bettering your product and not really getting affected. Well, that was really wonderful. Nitish. Yeah, so I think uh, rule is very simple. Either it's life or business. If anybody, anybody wants to grow, I think uh, they have to see what's happening. They have to see what's the trend. They have to keep upgrading it. It's the same as the business also. You have to see what's happening around the world and take out the best practices and follow it. I think, and if you follow this, uh, you'll always be in the game. And that is a mantra. I think uh, we also believe that. Uh, we always have to, I think, see what is happening and just keep uh, imbibing that in our brand. You know, I mean, success is also uh, not just cerebral and numbers, you know, there's always an X factor, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, in Indian context, you call it destiny and there's so many factors at play. It's not that you alone design your success. But uh, if I have to ask you your X factor uh, in your entrepreneurship journey, what has that thing been for, for you apart from the hard work, the other things that you have put in? So, like Parul, I think mentioned in uh, the last question that uh, one of the things that I look for is calculated risk. So, firstly, what I believe is businesses cannot be built on Excel sheets. You need to be positive, but you cannot be over optimistic. And uh, you have to be very realistic when it comes to disrupting the market also. Like how much, how, how much market share can you capture like in two years or five years or six or seven years. So, it, so it should not be key. So it might happen, obviously if destiny is there, but it doesn't usually happen. So, so, so being realistic and then what does being realistic and thinking big, you know, how do you differentiate the two? So thinking big is your long term vision. For example, as of today, we think that we want to be one of the leading companies in organic fragrances. But then there are a lot of uh, short term goals are uh, which are also attached to that long term vision. So those short term goals should be taken realistically. For example, I want to reach, for example, 1000 crores in five years, then I'll obviously back calculate that how much I need to do in one year, how much in two years and how much in three years. So that I think needs to be looked right. upon. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Parul, uh the X factor in your case uh, that has helped you uh, do what you're doing? I think, uh, first of all, we're not a very old company. We're just like 13, 14 months old. So one of the things um, that has helped us and was possibly also the X factor is um, frugality and the mindset to test and learn. These two things. So I am I'm a person which uh, likes to function with small but impactful teams. Right, we have a very small team doing what we have do, uh, uh, doing what we are doing today, but the fact that we've been able to achieve so much in very limited resources is something that would possibly be common to this table, and that's I think the core of multiple businesses which are growing, which are actually challenging big market leaders. Right, so one thing, uh, the whole uh, the concept of frugality is very very internal to us, and we think it's our superpower. The other one is that our ability to test and learn. The fact that we are more agile, the fact that we have the intent to understand a micro gap in the market, try and service that with the product and then be open to failing. That's also something that possibly a lot of large players don't have today. Like a FMCG company would have an innovation cycle of 24 to 36 months, right? They can't imagine launching, testing out a product in four to five months, but we could, right? I mean, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, we make protein products. We got a lot of demand of non-garlic, non-onion protein products. And we said, let's try, try this out with Gujarat and Rajasthan vegetarian consumers. If it is successful and if we are able to sell 2000 packs of this, we make it a permanent skew. And that's what we did. We had that answer in three months. However, if you were in a large CPG company, you would actually go 
do concept research, product research, you know, take feedback from 300 consumers, present it to multiple people and then possibly launch it. So we have that superpower and I think that's the X factor. Right. Can we close that door? Sorry. Can we close the door there? Yeah. Um, of course, I think frugal and building that impact, I think these are uh, keywords again, uh, entrepreneurs have to remember because there was one point when you got funding and you will build swanky offices. We no longer see those stories. You know, you have a golf turf at the terrace and all of that. Uh, Vani, uh, your uh, take on the X factor thing? Well, like she said, actually, we're also only 13, 14 months old, and we came up with a very new product. Um, and when we came up with this, we didn't really know if the consumer would accept it. So I think innovation was the center of our X factor. And then getting a validation from a customer within three months and being a profitable company in three months of starting, which was validation enough for us, was a big deal. And um, I think the customer response and the way they approached our vision was is our biggest sex factor and like she said as well like being able to take risk at this age because we are not scared to lose we're happy to take the risk see the response and grow from that and that's our biggest learning and x factor yeah because i think for a startup uh, moving around and you know what also parul said you know innovating is easier you know the turnaround is much easier and the risk appetite is even you know lower you know you can just do that right yeah for sure and i think as long as you are passionate and you really believe in what you're trying to give your customer as long as you stick to that it's it's the game changer and you can change nitesh so I like watching movies and uh, there's a movie called Once Upon a Time in Mumbai. So Imran Hashmi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to see the name of the movie. So people are talking about who will take and who will take. So they say, Bandra, you take it. They say, Andheri, you take it. So everyone has taken it. Then they ask, what are you going to take? So they said, all the sea is mine. So that's it. Actually, when you started, our thought is global. We have to make this a global brand or our perspective, our perspective was that we'll make it a global and uh, start it with US. Our focus was US and all our, I think, packaging, branding, thought process is global. And that's why I think it helped us. And uh, we are really growing in US and in UK and different other, uh, I think, European markets. So that's the thing, I think, uh, by seeing, uh, by, uh, by visioning to be a global brand, it makes us to be far ahead of others. Being a booster brand and doing, I think, more than 15,000 orders on US with our own money. Uh, that is credible. I think uh, we are in, uh, in, if you talk about first digital brand, I think in T, there's an, another brand which is very bigger, who is doing more orders than us on uh, US, <coughs> will be the second one with our own money. So thinking big can itself be the X Always. factor and, you know, keep you way ahead of the competition, you know, right? The, don't be the number one of India. Try to be the best in the world. That's our vision. That, that's the thought. Great. Um, so let me ask the final question. And if there is some time, I will also take in a couple of audience questions, you know. So, you know, staying long term uh, with your brand's uh, offerings, you know, is, is not easy, you know, because you are also swayed by a lot of uh, things like, you know, valuation, uh, profits, you know. So, in such a uh, atmosphere, you know, how, how can you stay consistent, focused on the long-term game? So, uh, especially when we talk about uh, the swanky valuations and everything, I think the founders are the only ones who every time and like every time they are on the ground. So, they know what is the background of that swanky valuation. How, how that swanky valuation is achieved. It is not easy to get that swanky valuation. It, it looks very good when it comes in the headlines. But uh, otherwise, the, the kind of hard work that is attached to that valuation is unmatchable. So long term, again, I will, I, I'll, focus, I'll focus more on the financial sustainability uh, and uh, keeping your teams lean and adapting a lot of things that are there in the changing environment. And that way, we so so we are so we we are just focused on one thing that our product should be good, the customer experience should be good, and it has to be good throughout our period of operation, say for ten years. 
then what extra we need to do on uh, like every time for example what what changes we are doing every month or every year to keep that uh, consistent approach of customer experience and a good quality product i think that is what keeps us going and right parul uh, the staying the long term vision i think in every business in every life there will be a part which will constantly change evolve and stay volatile and then there will be a part which has the core of the business which needs to be consistent 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 so when it comes to valuations external environment macroeconomic conditions like say the pandemic or demonetization right those there could be new problems tomorrow there could be new windfalls tomorrow there there will be a part that every founder knows is not in their circle of influence right but the circle of influence needs to be really solid and that's the only thing which is a uh, core to the business which is essentially the conversation of the company with the consumer right the core product offering which has the product the pricing a placement etc those you know the key marketing mix or the key product bundle mix right i think that needs to be consistent for you to be able to survive in the long run if that is shaky then the other part in any case won't be able to help you so i think for for this the sanity of being in this crazy uh, environment where things are constantly changing there are pressures external self created pressures it's important that your dialogue with the consumer is super clean super focused baki sab hote rahega hai matlab so the core offering if you even focus on your core offerings other things will take care of themselves yes. it will be a long term approach yes. right yes i think one more thing i would like to have uh, you know add here is um we normally see that very large companies define purpose right uh, and it, these are great statements which written, which are written in the hallways as you enter board rooms right it's important that it need need not be in great language or great english or whatever but just define the purpose of what you're trying to create because that truly helps you helps your team and when there are times when you're extremely uh, i would say perplexed or uh, not able to take a decision your core purpose will help you take that decision um like we at gladful we clearly define that our purpose is to make sure that we make great products which get into the indian dining tables which are high you know which are needing protein right so that was our purpose ki we will make foods indians crave with the protein they deserve so we don't do any innovation which offers anything less than 12% protein at any point in time we just you know they're great products which come to our table our r&d teams design they're great product bundles they're tasty the consumer would love them and there would be short term gains but we're very clear that we won't do that so we just decomplex uh, you know deep complexify our lives with having a purpose that's a very complex word <laughs> <laughs> so uh um, so vani you your take on this yeah well i think as um entrepreneurs whenever we start anything we have a vision we have an idea we have something we want to give to the customer that we are giving and what we have to do is just make sure that every decision we make so whether it's a new product we're launching or a person we're hiring every decision has to be made taking that purpose and that ideology in mind so you don't deviate from what you're trying to give there'll be temptations there might be funding there might be all those things but if you're not finding synergy in that and it's deviating from what you actually are trying to give out with what you started then i think you should not do it and as long as you're staying true to that you'll be able to succeed um also i think like right now there's so much going on and as an entrepreneur you're definitely going to have hurdles there'll be hard times there'll be good times and self growth is extremely important so whether you're going to do meditation you're going to do you need to talk to a therapist you need to read a book take a day off do that but do something for yourself so that you don't let all these distractions overtake your decisions at work and just make sure that you are focused and aligned with your vision as well absolutely so what was the question so i mean how how do you stay long term with your vision in the wake of some exciting moments like a big funding coming your way more profit you're coming your way at the point of uh, you know compromising with your core offering how do you stay long term despite all of those temptations so i think is a vision uh, is thinking being there is thinking big that uh, you set a target you set goals and think 
and you set goals, short term goals, I think long term goals, and you think about long term goals because uh, as an entrepreneur, you are creating value, you're solving a problem, and it is a long term problem you're solving. So that's why I think you always focus on the long term perspective of and uh, long term perspective and what problem you're trying to solve it, and we continue to for, we continue our journey uh, to solve that problem. So yeah, that's it. I think we have one quick, uh, you know, mo moment. I can ask a quick question to all of you. So wh what emerges out of this discussion is that uh, mindset is actually everything. You know, it's, it's more of a uh, being, you know, mentally and uh, agile and, uh, you know, fit to an extent that you, you're not swayed. It's more of a discipline, I think. I think startup and discipline are very interconnected, right? Not getting swayed is all about discipline, not about management at all, right? I think somewhere it's mindset right it's not anything management skills or anything else my last question you know you you spoke about parallel about uh, frugal and impact uh, how important i mean can small teams create uh, impact i mean all of you i mean quickly yeah i can start with you yeah i think absolutely i think one person can create impact and we've got multiple examples uh, in india outside india and uh, i think one thing um, that truly um, helps or has helped me is to look at uh, a problem which can impact a large number of people. That motivates me. And I think every entrepreneur has their own set of motivations. My motivation is can I impact a very large number of people in the long run? And I do believe we can create impact. We are a very small team and I'm sure all of us will do it at you know, some point in time. Um, I totally agree with her, but I also think that even if you impact one person, it validates what you're doing. Um, I'll just give an example of one of the first customer reviews we got for our product because was this girl had bought an organizer and taken it on a hall, on her vacation. And she wrote back actually, and she said that I want to thank the brains of Tidy Up because there's not been one day on my vacation that I was not thankful to you guys for this product that you've given me and how easy it was to find everything in my bag. My husband stopped fighting with me and everything was just quicker. So that was that one person's validation changed and I think that helped us push our product so much that we could help affect other people in that manner. Again, again the question, <laughs> please tell. Yeah. So, so we're talking about, you know, uh, tea, frugal, being frugal and creating impact, even with smaller teams, you know. Is it achievable also when you are at scale, you're trying to be at scale, you know? Uh, you know, I think it depends on scale. I think when you are depending on scale, if you are small, then you can manage with the team, be frugal. Frugal is always, I think, good. I think uh, because fundamentals of business never change. Business is all about profit. You have to generate profit. Uh, unit economics has to be good, I think. And, and you know, most of the businesses, I think, out of 100, I think only 1% is getting funded. 99% are not getting funded. They have to, have, to, have to get the, I think, profit, I think, get the money from their business only. So, I think when you scale, you need, I think, you need uh, money, you need tech, you need people, because then only you can scale. I think with the limit, being frugal or limited people, you can create impact, but it will be limited impact. Final words, Bharat. So, uh, so sometimes like uh, a lot of questions come to me, like what is the difference between a startup and a conventional business? So, for example, what a conventional business has done in 50 years, a startup will do that in eight years. So why a startup is able to do that in eight years? Because every person in the, in the team is making an impact in itself. And that's why it, it is made possible that the kind of scale that a conventional business has, has achieved in eight, 40 years, the startup is able to achieve that in eight years. So I think every, uh, I, I think every person in the team makes an impact. Uh, and and we, we, for example, we are a very impactful startup when it comes to women empowerment, when it comes to uh, uh, environment also. Uh, uh, we, we recycle, I think, 40 tons of flowers every month. Uh, so every every woman worker who is working with us is making an impact though for example they are doing it just to earn a livelihood but indirectly they are making an impact on the environment so every every team member uh, in the startup is able to make some impact and that's why a startup is able to achieve what they achieve 
Wonderful. I mean, uh, I'm sure uh, there have been a lot of takeaways for all of you who were intently listening to this conversation about uh, what is the X factor they had, what are the ways to stay focused long term and that you can create impact with smaller teams. Thank you all of you for sharing your thoughts on this panel.